Google is now a word in the Merriam-Webster dictionary. And for good reason, it's used a lot. There are 3.5 billion searches in a day. That's 40,000 per second. And maybe we take this for granted, the power to get whatever information we want on the first page of Google. I mean, how many times have you actually gone to the second page? And let's say if we do take this for granted, what better way to appreciate this technology than to, well, recreate it ourselves? And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Now, where do we even get started? And why am I even doing this? Well, my computer science professor actually mentioned how to create a simple web crawler. And it actually isn't as difficult as it seems. And what's the next logical thing to do other than to turn it into a full-on search engine? And so that's what I'll be doing. But first, we need to start off with a web crawler. But what is a web crawler? This is a website. But what is a website? Now, the web and the internet are not the same thing. The web is a kind of structure built on top of the internet. And there are other things that exist on the internet that aren't particularly on the web. This can include things such as video games or bit torrents. Now, the great thing about the web is that it's standardized through HTML which is the language of the web. It's kind of like the bone structure. It sets out the layout of the page and then other extra little fluff around it can be built on top of it. Now, if we look on the inside of this website, we'll see a bunch of HTML. HTML is kind of like a really explicit Word document. Instead of hitting some nice little GUI buttons on the top of a document in Word, you just kind of type everything out. And there are these things called tags, and different tags affect, the, affect text in different ways. An example would be like, to make bold text, you use a B tag, and any text you put in, on the inside of it will become bold. Or you can say P for paragraph. And you can actually see this in this HTML of this website. H1 being a heading, P for paragraph. We have the title up here. Now, for our web crawler, we want to work with a specific tag called the A tag, or anchor. Now, this tag is used to describe a link to another website. Here we have an A tag, along with this href attribute. Now, in that href attribute, we have a link to another website. So, what can we do with this? Well, what we do is, is that we look at the HTML of a website, we look for all of the a tags and the href values which give us the links. We then take that link and go to that website and then look at its HTML. And then we continue doing this, looking at that website's a tags and then going to that website and then taking that one and going to another website. And well, you can see where this goes you exponentially discover more and more websites just by following the links through them. And because HTML is standardized, we're able to know that each website will have, well, if it even contains any links, will follow this format. Now, because this is such a repetitive process, it wouldn't actually be that difficult to write a program to just follow all these links, identify the A tags, and then follow those links and just continue it. And this is what is essentially a web crawler. It's just the discovery of all of the links. And all we really need to do is just create a list and write down all of the websites we visit. And eventually we'll have a massive list of a bunch of websites. Now that actually doesn't seem that difficult. And this is actually the first step in creating our search engine. So let's do it. So we're going to go ahead and write this web crawler in Python, which is a pretty simple programming language. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at a simplified version as to what the code would look like. So starting off here, we have our various imports to libraries that we're going to be using. And then we have our initial URL. Now this is the first website we're going to start off with, and then we're going to follow links from that website to others. So. Our initial URL can be anything. I'm just gonna use Google here. And then we have our URL queue. This variable is a list containing all of the websites we still need to visit. So when we look at all of the website's HTML code, 
we're going to go ahead and write down all the links and put that in a queue so that we can visit each one by one later. Our URL list, on the other hand, will just contain all of the links that we know of, whether or not it's been processed or not. And that'll just help us keep track and make sure we don't write down any duplicates because we don't want to visit the same website multiple times. Moving down, we'll see our main loop here. So we'll make sure that our URL queue still has values in it, and then we'll keep looping, which it will keep looping basically forever since there's a lot of websites out there. So here we have, if keyboard is press Q, just break out of the loop. And this will help us exit the program in a more clean way. So all we need to do is hit Q on our keyboard. We'll take the first link in our URL queue and print out some information just so we know what's going on and then remove it from the queue. Next, we'll go ahead and try and request its HTML. This requests.get command will give us all of the HTML for the website, which we can then process later. And if it doesn't end up working, we'll let us know. Next, we'll go ahead and parse this HTML. So we'll create an HTML parser and then feed the response in. Now, this is where the code starts getting a little bit messy. The HTML parser is fairly large and a little bit complex. So we start off with its initialization. We define some variables, such as some tag data, um, which tags we want to save information on, such as headings, like the first heading, second heading, third heading, the title, uh, some meta tags, and the A tag being the links. We then keep track of what the current tag we're processing, its attributes, and its data. We then keep track of all of the links on the website, uh, some keywords, its title, a few different titles actually, and its description. So first we'll start off with our static methods, which are just kind of used to help parse uh, the HTML code. So we have our clean URL. Now, as a limitation to our search engine, we will only be indexing the base website. We won't be looking at any subpages because we, we would end up most likely drilling down into one website and indexing that whole website, and that'll just never end. So we're only going to look at base websites like google.com, and if there's any slash anything, we're just going to ignore it. This make keywords method will actually take in a large string of words, and then we'll split it up and then remove anything that's not alphanumerical and just return a list of all of the words. Next, we have make alphanumerical, which will just remove any characters we don't want in our search engine. If we scroll down, we can handle the start tag and the end tag. So it goes through each tag individually, and it tells you the start of the tag here, and then we make sure to set these variables accordingly, and then also handle our end tag. And then in the middle, where we see all of the information about the tag, we can go ahead and process that. So for example, if the tag is a title tag, we'll make the title alphanumerical, uh, make sure to make a list of the keywords from that title, and then add that to our word list. Now, meta tags are a little interesting because they can contain a lot of different information. An example would be a description of the website or the title of the website can actually be in a meta tag as well. So we actually are going to focus on those main areas. We're going to see if the tag is a description one and look at its content. We're going to make it alphanumerical and then make a list of keywords for it. Next, we'll see if the meta tag gives us a site name or its own title. This is just going to ensure that we have a few different ways of actually accessing a website's title. That can be through its HTML title tag or its meta tags being a site name or its meta title tag. And we just can kind of pick any one that we want really first, but it ensures that we still have some type of title to give that website. Then we'll look through the heading tags and make keywords for it. Headings are most likely a key part of the information describing the kind of content that's on that web page. So we're really just going to take all of the headings and set it into keywords. Once we've parsed the entire HTML of the page, we can pick, go through our different possibilities of titles and then make that the title of the website. We'll then go ahead and take all the keywords, separate it by spaces. This is kind of being done in a strange way, actually, because we're actually going to be sending this to an SQL database. We add escapes. 
So adding escapes is where we put in a slash in front of some special characters. So just adding a slash in front of it will ensure that we're not telling the code to do something and more so just treat it as a normal character. So we have another function up there to create that and then we'll separate it by some hashtags. So we'll have our URL, the title, and keywords. We'll then write all that to a text file and in case the parsing doesn't go correctly, we don't want the whole program to crash, so we'll just say it can't decode and just continue on. So that was a kind of basic rundown as to what the code looks like. So I guess that really only leaves one thing left to do. Let's run it. All right, we can see all of the websites it's visiting. We started off with Google, and now we're going to different Google subdomains here. My account, safety, about, and we ended up going to android.com as well. I'll go ahead and let this run for a little bit. All right, so we're about 122 URLs in and we made it to reddit.com. Our total URLs are around 650 and the ones we've actually processed are around 140. And we still have, that means we still have about 500 in the queue, but of course this will keep expanding for quite a while. And this is really just the web crawler. Now this really isn't much of a search engine right now. All we're really doing is just writing down a big list of websites and some of its keywords, which are pretty important. We'll need some way of storing this into like a database and creating a way to access the websites we want based on some keyword input. So, we'll do that in the next part. Thanks for watching.